I've just found the only working Bang & Olufsen Hyperbo 5 RG Steel radiogram in the world. I can't believe I've been able to say that. I've been collecting Bang & Olufsen products since I was a teenager. That's 35 years. And in all that time, I never thought I'd been able to say this. I can't believe this has happened. In fact, I'm going to say it again. I've just found the only working Hyperbo 5 RG Steel radiogram in the world, and it's not in a museum. I'm going to tell you the full story now. Sorry if I look excited. If you don't know me, I'm Steve from Sounds Heavenly. I make the cables that connect Bang & Olufsen products. I'm a lifelong B&O enthusiast. Well, make that fanatic. Um, I'm privileged to currently be a Bang & Olufsen brand ambassador. And the best part of that is sharing my love of B&O with other collectors around the world. And that's the reason that my friend Ulf Lundin sent me the photograph this week that started this video. In case you don't know, this is the previously untold story of a Bang & Olufsen product that has taken on almost mythical status amongst B&O collectors. Until now, only one of these fabled items was known of in a museum collection. Now, when I saw the picture that Ulf sent me of the legendary 1934 Hyperbo 5 RG Steel in his home, I must admit my heart skipped a beat. To a lifelong B&O collector like myself, this is like finding a lost Leonardo da Vinci sketch in your loft. It really is that significant. So why all the fuss? Well, way back in 1934, Bang & Olufsen released the Hyperbo, an integrated gramophone, radio and speaker system. And it was revolutionary, it pioneered B&O's approach of sound as furniture. And that has developed into the legendary style that we now know of as Bang & Olufsen's design. Now the Hyperbo 5 RG steel was designed by Peter Bang. It was inspired by his Marcel Breuer B33 Bauhaus chair. Peter Bang had recently moved into a new house and he wanted to design something to use himself that would fit perfectly into his new surroundings. Now the Five um, was also produced in a more traditional wooden cabinet as the Hyperbo 5 RGF. Common to both versions was the built-in record drawer with a special mechanism that let the drawer drop slightly at the front when fully extended and that made it much easier to get to your records. Now technically this was a really advanced device at the time. It featured five valves using the TRF principle with diode detector. In case you're interested, the actual valves used were two of the Rens 1234 valves, one Ren 924 and two Rens 1384 valves. The radio tuner covered the broadcast wave, as we know it now, the medium wave, and the long wave radio bands. Also included was a single record player, so not a record changer, and an electromagnetic dynamic loudspeaker, so basically a moving coil speaker with a field excitation coil. A power output, by modern standards, very small, was 4 watts in mono. Materials were the featured steel tubes on the RG Steel version and then a wooden case. And the price in the first year of sale was 970 Danish kroner, which at current exchange rates was around about 110 British pounds. Obviously that's back in 1934, so not a direct equivalent there. Now unfortunately, the Hyperbo was a spectacular commercial failure at the time. Only 40 units were sold, and today there's only one original example remaining, which I understand doesn't work, is incomplete, and for many years was on display in an Oslo museum. Now the one that I saw when I visited Struer in 2012 was a carefully crafted replica, and it was an empty shell. 
Although there are currently, as of 2021, rumours that the original remaining item is returning to the Struer Museum for display. So watch this space. Now this is the point where I'll let my friend Ulf pick up the story. So he's told me, at the end of the 1990s, Danish craftsman and long-term Bang & Olufsen employee Mogens Ringdahl got an order from BNO to produce a couple of replicas of the Hyperbo 5 RG steel uh, to form part of an exhibition of classic BNO products in Copenhagen called the Vision and Legend exhibition. And that incidentally led to the publishing of the excellent BNO book of the same name. BNO wanted a piece of this revolutionary design for their 75th year anniversary because the company actually didn't have a complete set of apparatus for this item. So Mogan's obliged and he also made one for himself. Now Ulf met Mogan's in Struer in 2000 and by virtue of uh, I guess very very uh, great persuasive powers persuaded Mogan's to sell it to him. At this point it was an empty shell and the magic of this is that Ulf has, in the, the next two decades, managed to search and find the original chassis, record player and loudspeaker for the unit. So since then, a couple more replicas have been made in Denmark. However, these are not from the original order from B&O, but they were made for a private collector. Now, unfortunately, the builder, Mogens Ringdahl, has since passed away. I'm pleased to say Ulf has now completed his factory approved shell with the original components. Over the years he's improved the handles and knobs to match exactly what they would have looked like in the original adverts for the Hyperpo. It is now working but he says it does need a little bit of tender loving care as you'd expect from a music system containing parts that are almost 80 years old inside. Now in case anyone is wondering, I can confirm this item is not, I repeat, not for sale. So please don't send me a message saying where do I buy this, you can't. <laughs> if it were for sale, please rest assured I would be at the very front of the queue. However, please rest assured that this beautiful piece of Bang & Olufsen history is loved and cherished and actually used for its intended purpose by a lifelong B&O enthusiast and he's continuing to restore it to keep it in its original glory. Also I can confirm that whilst technically I could help Ulf to upgrade this to integrate the new Beer Sound Core music streamer if he asked, I wouldn't do this. Um, I don't think with this being a one-off legendary item it, I don't think it would be appropriate or true to the original purpose. But what do you think? Is this your favourite vintage B&O product, your ultimate purchase? Or do you have another classic item that you've discovered after a long search? You'll actually see mine here, the uh, 1977 Beer Centre 3300, the system I had as a 13 year old, and uh, which I've recently been able to obtain again. I'll link to, um, to a video shortly that will tell you more about that and also to some more videos covering um, the excellent classic B&O collection of my friend uh, Gavin Sykes in Lincoln. But please let me know if you have a similar story, if there's something that you found after a long search that you'd like to share. Thank you for watching and for sharing in my excitement of this incredible Bang & Olufsen find. There will be lots more special videos like this coming and uh, hopefully some more details on this superb Hyperbo 5RG steel. <laughs>